we'll introduce some of the concepts required to convert a physical machine to a VM. And there's a few different software options out there that can do this for you. I'll walk you through those in just a moment. They all work somewhat similarly though. So let's say we have this physical server. This is a physical server with, let's say, Windows installed on it. And it's got all of this physical hardware, like CPUs and network adapters and memory and data. And my Windows operating system has drivers for things like the network adapters, right? It knows what kind of CPUs are these AMD or Intel CPUs. It's got a SCSI controller to connect to these physical disks. And so there's stuff going on inside the operating system that is aware of the actual physical hardware. So when we take this physical server and we use one of our tools to convert it to a virtual machine, the first step that happens is the virtual machine is created. We're going to have a virtual machine present on one of our hypervisors with the appropriate CPU, network, memory, and storage specifications. Right? And it might not match up with exactly what we have in the physical server. As a matter of fact, my VM may actually run better and faster if I give it fewer CPUs. When we create a virtual machine, our goal is always to right size that virtual machine. It's never just take what the physical server had and duplicate it. Our goal is always to right size it, to give the virtual machine the correct resources that it needs to do its job and nothing extra. We want our VMs to be at about 60, 70, percent utilization for CPU and the same for memory. We don't want them sitting there at 10% CPU utilization with four CPUs. That's not good. We're also going to need a NIC. We're going to need a network interface card on the virtual machine. And this is going to be a hardware change for the guest operating system. So what we're going to now have is probably a network interface card that was specifically designed to run on a virtual machine. A good example of this is the VMware VMXNet3 virtual NIC. The beautiful thing about this though, is that now the virtual machine has no relationship with the actual physical hardware. So we get mobility, but the other benefit that people don't think about so often is the fact that as I virtualize, all of my Windows instances and all of my Linux instances, they're going to have a similar set of virtual hardware. It's going to really allow me to standardize my operating system configuration. So we'll replace our physical hardware with virtual hardware, and we'll replace our hard disk with a virtual disk. This is a file that could be on local storage of the host. It could be on a fiber channel or iSCSI storage array. It could be on an NFS server. doesn't really matter where. What matters is that we create this virtual disk and that we migrate all of the data from the source virtual machine to that virtual disk. And when the VM powers on, it's got its new hardware. It's got its new disk. And it should just work. So that's how we actually convert a physical server to a virtual machine. And depending on which hypervisor you're using, VMware has vCenter converter. Microsoft has the VM converter and Veeam has a product called disk to VHD. Now Veeam is a third party to this process, but they offer a conversion utility that you can use for Hyper-V. And the Veeam product line is really excellent. If you're considering virtualizing, it's definitely worth a look. They provide some excellent tools. So now we can start using these solutions to take our existing physical servers, convert them to VMs, and run them on our hypervisors.